Thank you, sir. Don't know if we'll need it because we're actually going to use prompter for this since it's on sticks, but thank you still. Hannah, do you think that you could move that key light back just like a foot? Yeah, is this good? Yep. That is perfect. Thank you, Hannah. All right, let's let's roll on camera. Camera's rolling. All right. Vsauce, I'm Jake, and how do you make a Vsauce 3 video? Well, first you need a question. For me, that usually comes from a video game, a book, or a movie. And in the case of my last video, Could You Be a Parasite, it came from one of my favorite films, The Thing. If you haven't seen that episode, I would highly recommend watching it. There'll be a link in the top of the description, because that is the episode we will be focusing on today. In order to create, I need a problem to solve. What is it that I'm trying to answer, and how can I answer it in a way that is unique to me, is different. But that doesn't mean the idea needs to be wholly original. I mean, everything is an interpretation or a retelling of something that has come before, consciously or, or not. It's the presentation, in the case of a Vsauce 3 video, it's the way the story is presented in particular. The journey you go on to find answers or uncover new questions. You need to find that topic that burrows into your mind, nagging you to find out more, to answer it. This video has one purpose, to show you what goes into making an episode. On Twitter, I asked if you'd be interested in a video about actually making a video, a kind of behind the scenes look, and a resounding amount of you said yes. And I've already discussed the process of not making a video in my video about not making a video. The weeks or months that go into reading and researching and the days that go into condensing the information into a narrative script. So we'll pick up from there. Once we have the script, what? happens. Well, for me, I need music. The beat kicks in and it motivates everything. It can heighten your expectations. It can set the tone for how you feel. And then you use the camera and the script to emphasize that. The frame is a canvas. Everything in it, my voice, my movements, the cameras, the script, the music, all work to help create this tiny rectangular world that we exist in. Everything outside of it doesn't matter. Forget about it. Instead, focus on what I tell you, what I show you. I write with music in mind so that the script and the soundtrack feel like they were made to be together. I always create a playlist before I film anything. I've already made the movie in my head. And now that you have your music and you have your script, you get to make the fun stuff. You decide how you use the camera to capture the narrative that you want to tell. For example, <clears throat> Jake says it's transient. To continue its life cycle, it has to find a new home. The camera pans to reveal the house. The music comes up. Jake walks into frame and towards the cabin. We hear his voice from the next shot. But then there are parasites that are more insidious. Now all the footage is captured. We have all these individual pieces that need to be put together. Side note, when I write, I've already found all the assets I want to include, archival footage, stock footage, Etc. It isn't an afterthought. Everything you show on screen has to have purpose. Again, it has to be motivated. See, this clip has no reason to be here. It detracts from the story. Then comes my favorite part, the lie. Where if we did our job well, you don't even notice that we were lying to you. And for that, we need the best liar on the planet, our cinematographer and VFX wizard, Eric Langley. <laughs> interested in learning how to do these kinds of visual effects, that is rotoscoping and masking, there are lots of tutorials online, but one of my favorites is VFX Rotoscoping 101 on Skillshare.com, who we use a bunch and they were nice enough to sponsor this episode and also support Vsauce. If you want to try them out, we have a deal for three months for only 99 cents that you can go to and check out with the link at the top of the description. I actually used their color grading course a few months ago, which brings us to the next part of making a video. The way that it looks. Right, Eric?
This is how the camera captured it. It looks like a really flat image. Not much color, saturation, shadows, highlights, or contrast, but that's because we use a camera, a RED, that records raw images. Your cell phone, for example, applies a color profile and such when you film, which makes it harder to adjust after. Whereas this camera captures a lot more information and then allows you to adjust all of those factors later. So we can go from this to this with color correction and with much greater latitude. And even how you color grade the footage is important. It lets you set a visual tone. I purposefully oversaturated most of the footage and removed highlights and increased shadows because I thought it was an interesting juxtaposition next to the dark and creepy subject matter. It is important to use every tool available to you to create exactly what you want. Every piece matters. They all need to work together to balance out. For me, there should be a thoughtfulness with what you make from the script or the information given or the cinematography, music, visual effects, color, and especially the sound. Sound design is successful when you don't notice it. Let's use the intro shot. This is what it sounded like when we filmed it. There's no sound because the drone we use doesn't record it, so we have to recreate it entirely. Here is the same shot but with sound effects. Wind, trees swaying, footsteps in snow matched with me walking, and a nice sound effect for emphasis on the title. Here it is again with my voice dubbed over to sound like I'm talking through a radio. Is anyone there? This is Jake Roper from Outpost 31. The lab is destroyed. I need immediate support. That audio was actually recorded a week later in my apartment on my cell phone. And finally, here it is with the soundtrack. Please come back. One thing I've been really into exploring lately is match cuts. When the sound of one thing is replaced by another. Like when I slam the door in this scene, but instead of hearing the door close, you hear wood bursting from flame. It's about playing with expectations. Oh, also the fire crackling is from a campfire months earlier recorded by our sound designer in Alaska. Here it is without the fire sound at all. Would you ever know? I mean, how do I know that the words that are coming out of my mouth are, are mine? And all those adjustments we make are defined before we film. It has to be exact to create the illusion of the world we are trying to present. And it doesn't matter what story you tell as long as you can tell it well. And believe me, the hardest part of making a video is actually making it. Not to get too meta, but even with this video, it took me a while to make because I wanted it to have purpose. But maybe sometimes sharing is purpose enough. And as always, Thanks for watching. All right, that one felt pretty good. Wow, that was really good. Last thing, we like to custom make the Vsauce outros to fit the topic of the video. So for Could You Be a Parasite, Eric 3D printed a Vsauce plate, put it on the back of a fish tank, filled the fish tank with smoke, filmed through the smoke and the fish tank to the plate, and then lit a plastic bag on fire to get this practical effect.